Guru Prakash Paswan, in the interest of transparency, shouldn't the government have put out details of how much does it how much does it cost to do multiple elections at different times of the year over a five-year cycle versus how much it will take to do these two elections? Then we can do a cost-benefit analysis. You know how much one election costs, how much multiple elections cost. And secondly, if you couldn't do four elections together this time round because it was complex, how will you be able to do multiple elections? The ARP spokesperson says you can't do one nation, one examination. How will you do one nation, one election? No, no, Rahul, there are multiple allegations and questions for which uh, I would request for some time. First and foremost, uh, the spokesperson from the uh, Shiv Sena, she mentioned about breaking of parties without any evidence, without any logic. So I think it doesn't make any sense. The Shiv Sena she is part of is in alliance with Congress party and Congress party historically has suspended with evidence more than 50 state governments. So Congress party or the India alliance giving lecture on Indian federal structure. Is no, why don't you answer my question one, one, by, one, one by one. How much is the saving? Does the BJP have an estimate for how much money India will save by doing one election or two elections versus multiple elections? Rahul ji, I have a great amount of respect. You have had three spokespersons against me. They have raised some valid. They have raised some very valid concern. I allow some time to respond to these allegations, and I will come to your question as well. One election cost, as per the ECI data, is sixty thousand crore. The last uh, data which has come out, the 2019 parliamentary election, it costed 60,000 crore. So there is definitely, when we uh, come with the idea of one nation, one election, the red cost effectiveness is going to come automatically. But the point is different. The point is this, that when uh, we speak of it, it is just a build-up, it is just a follow-up on the historical foundation. Like I quoted, 170th Law Commission report, EMS Sudarshan Nachiyapan report, the Coven Committee has laid out a very well-synchronized idea of having a national and state election simultaneously. It has proposed two-phase election, national and state election and 100-day plan for the panchayat elections as well. But at the same time, let me respond to the concerns that were raised by the spokesperson from the other political parties. Aam Admi Party spokesperson spoke about the competence of the government. Who are you? Who are we, Rahulji, to decide the competence of the government or the legitimacy of the government? The people of India will decide the legitimacy of any government. And the people of India has given a historical, remarkable third term to Prime Minister Modi, which has rarely happened in the history of Coming our country or in the history of world politics. Barring Margaret Thatcher and uh, Tony Blair. No, no, no. Come, Rahulji, you have to speak. Let him speak. Otherwise, he won't let you speak. Very quickly, get to answering my question. How much is the cost saving? How much is the cost they, saving no, if we were to do this? Talking about where Rahul ji, Rahul ji, he has no answer. They are they are talking they are but talking about Manipur. Attention. They are talking Wait about other elections. They are talking about Manipur. Go go speak on. You speak on Manipur. You speak on Manipur. You speak on X Y Z. So Guru you have Kash, to have the patience please answer to answer my question. As well. Does this we government have an estimate for how much is the cost saving if we do one nation one election versus the current format of multiple elections? Do you have a number? How much will we save? No, no, that that we will. No, no, that we will. Rahul ji, Rahul ji, that we will. That that will definitely come out. But the point is this: you are asking me question that how can you hold four elections simultaneously? This is such a regressive and a backward-looking point. Ten years ago, Manmohan Singh said that the biggest threat to internal security is left-wing extremism. Today, we are at the elimination of left-wing extremism. So, just to suggest that if we cannot do anything today, we won't be able to do it anything five years down the line or ten years down the line. This is just preposterous. This is just foolish to suggest that if we are not able to pull off anything today, we won't be able to pull off anything five years down the line as well. People used to say 370 abrogation will not happen, but abrogation of 370 happened. We eliminated left-wing extremism. Similarly, if we are not able to do four elections today because of security concern, five years down the line, we will definitely be in a position to conduct one nation, one election, which will again, I am suggesting, will be an extension to what the Congress party or the previous political leadership has suggested in the law commission okay. report. In the Let me hold you there for a report. second. So to suggest Priyanka Chaturvedi, just, 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 just one second, sir. Priyanka Chaturvedi, is, even now, there are states where assembly elections are held simultaneously with Lok Sabha elections. States like Andhra Pradesh, Sikkim, Arunachal, uh, Odisha, and they happen well. You've got a setup which is already in place for a big national election. And in four states, you conduct an assembly election simultaneously. Why can't that be extended pan-India? Surely it can be done. What's your concern? My, my concern is just this, that these simultaneous elections go against the spirit of democracy, go against the spirit of accountability. And that is why the simultaneous elections do not make a good idea. 
and also these elected uh, governments that come into place for a tenure of five years, you're talking about dissolving them and you're talking about elections to happen simultaneously. So the second problem being, if there is a hung parliament or there is a hung assembly or assemblies, uh, you know, uh, governments are pulled down like Bharti Janata Party has mastered the art of pulling down governments by, uh, you know, undermining the constitution. What happens then? How do we address that? Again, we are only going on talking on the basis of a, a committee report which has been accepted by the cabinet. However, we do not know the contours of the bill. And last but not the, not, not the least, uh, listening to the response of uh, Mr. Paswan, I'm pretty certain the several U-turns that they've had in their 100 days, this is also headed towards a U-turn. Just like the UCC, just like the various other uh, things that were spoken about by the Prime Minister, even the One Nation, One Election is heading towards a U-turn simply because it's not implementable. B, they do not have any clue. C, they do not know how the bill will be presented. How will it be drafted? How will they get the two-thirds majority in the uh, assemblies as well as in the centre? So they can continue to talk about it to divert attention from various other challenges that India is facing. And it is, like I said, heading towards a U-turn. No, but Shama Mohammed, surely the government has thought this through. If Ashwini Vaishnav is doing a briefing and they're coming and speaking in a cabinet briefing, explaining they'll bring the bill, then it's their credibility on the line. If the opposition thinks they have the numbers, you oppose it. Let the people of India find out if the government has a two-thirds majority in the Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha and half the state assemblies or not. So first, to Guru Prakash, I just want to tell you that you keep saying that I want to talk about Manipur. Yes, Manipur is part and parcel of my country. I love the people of Manipur and we'll continue to talk about Manipur. If you don't like but it, this is not it about is your problem. The number is two, not about Manipur, number madam. Two, the debate number is not two, about Manipur. Guru Prakash, pass one election, one election. One election. Later Later down. Your Let Shama Mohammed speak. Shama. Yeah, demonetization, flopped. Farmer bill, flopped. Ma'am, please come to this topic. Shama Mohammed, you are digressing. Me. Do not, this you is very school, me. college level debating tactics. You I'm discussing me. one nation, one election. If you have an Rahul, argument to make, make it. Rahul, you asked me a question. That but you're not answering that question, Shama Mohammed. No, no, you asked me the question, hasn't the government thought through if they put this across? Didn't you ask me that? So I was telling you the reply to that. Didn't they talk, think through demonetization? Didn't they think through the farmer bills? And I'm giving an answer to that. That is not digressing from the topic or the question you asked me. Number two, uh, Number three, the most important thing. The questions we have asked Guru Prakash about how does he manage when the government falls and there is an election happening one year before, two years before, six months before the COVID report says you will do another election. So how do they cut the cost? He has not answered no, that. No, because all assemblies yes. won't fall. I don't no, buy that argument. Ja no, one second, one second. I don't buy that argument. Jasmine Shah, you made the same argument. If, if, if there are 28 assembly elections, even if a few governments fall, there will be three, four, five elections that happen midterm. For the other 20 plus states, you won't need elections. Many of the governments will be stable governments. Jasmine? No, but at what cost to the people who have to go for the election process again? Rahul, this is very important to like for narrow gains, not narrow gains. First of all, you are going to lose more money by simultaneous election. But no, why do you think you lose more money? Why do you think you lose more money? Which is an equal opportunity in election. No, no, I will tell you why. Think about a candidate. Think about a candidate from a smaller party or an Aam Aadmi party, which does not have the kind of coffers because electoral bonds money have gone all to BJP. In a span of five years, if a government falls, you end up fighting three elections. And the most ridiculous thing, which has not happened anywhere in the world, is that even if six or eight months before an election, uh, your assembly is dissolved, you will fight again another after eight months. No, but why are you citing me, uh, the possibility the of the exception and making that ready. your principal I, argument? That may happen in the odd case. It, it won't happen in 28 cases. Ra Rahul, not at all. Rahul, in a parliamentary form of democracy, the, the entire structure lies on having the confidence of the House. Numerous number of times houses have not given confidence and governments have fallen in center also and at the state also. It's not once in a generational event. It happens probably once every one or two years. Now let me answer the question you asked Guru Prakash which is Kitna paisa bachaoge. He has not read the Cohen committee report. I'll read just one line and it'll tell you this is entirely a Hawa, Hawa Hawaii idea. Para 15 of the executive uh, summary of the report says that the election commission of India and the state commissions may carry out an appropriate exercise to prepare a suitable plan and estimate for conduct of simultaneous elections. So you have gone ahead, proposed an idea, cabinet has accepted it, you have no idea how much money will go. This no. is exactly so why there is saying. an estimate. Just like just one second. Was, it, it there is an estimate. The Niti Aayog has economy. a report that they put out. You are trying out. to damage the democracy and you have not even calculated how much will it cost. No, so... 
Priyanka Chaturvedi, there's an estimate by the Niti Aayog which says that at this moment, in this five-year election cycle, it costs 10 rupees per voter per year. The Niti Aayog estimates that in the new cycle, where there's one election and then the smaller panchayat election, it will cost 5 rupees per voter per year. That's Basically, they're saying you could reduce by half the amount of money it costs to conduct elections in India no. over a five-year period. Actually, two things, uh, Rahul, before I uh, uh, answer your point. Just one point. Out of the 32 parties that uh, Mr. Paswan mentioned, let me tell you, 24 of those parties do not even have a single member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Out of which only two parties have two MPs. Seven parties have only one MP. So the 32 party number that he gave who are, who are in agreement of this entire process is actually ridiculous. Uh, now, the second point that you said, oh, Niti Aayog has come up with this. Election Commission has a, another report which totally goes against what Niti Aayog has said. Election Commission says it will be a more expensive idea and it would have need constitutional amendment and it would have its challenges which I've already spoken about earlier. So this is also contested. We will only know once there is a committee which actually sits down and measures the expenses that would be needed, right from setting up EVMs to VV pads to security forces to manpower mobilization to ensuring the booths that are there to ensuring just about every single aspect of an election happening simultaneously on all three layers of governance. So that is where the question arises. So but ma'am, can I pause you to right say now, that that is already board. being done? When a Lok Sabha election happens in 543 constituencies, you're already setting up all the polling booths. You're only doing both elections simultaneously, the Assembly and the Lok Sabha. In any case, you're doing Lok Sabha elections. And in many states like Orissa, like Andhra Pradesh, like Arunachal, like Sikkim, you're doing the Assembly election already. So there is a template that exists. No, is that a question for me? Yes, ma'am, it is. So if there is a template that exists, what stopped the uh, election commission to allow the same template that has been continuing over the years to have Haryana, Maharashtra, Jharkhand election to happen this year? I'll tell you why it didn't happen. I'll tell you why Maharashtra didn't happen. Maharashtra did not happen because BJP sees a spectacular defeat and they know that they have at the last minute introduced a Ladki Behan Yojana after seeing the Lok Sabha results. They want to put some money into every account, try to get the political benefit out of it, and try to push the election as far as possible. This is the only reality, and I hope we wake up to the idea of Bharatiya Janata Party setting out these dead headings and then taking a U-turn because they've distracted the country into, uh, you know, into, into making observations of things that are not of prime importance. What is of prime importance is that we have local body elections which have been pending for long. We have an accountability which is still waiting at the Chief Justice of India's table where we need to understand that is it okay to pull down governments, to take okay. away election symbols, to take away political parties.